Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most fascinating topics in mathematics, the imaginary unit known as I, and a brand new system I call the virtual number system. Now, if you've ever wondered why I squared equals negative one, or whether there's a better way to handle square roots of negative numbers, this video is for you. By the end, you'll see how math isn't just about rules. It's about creativity, logic, and solving problems in new ways. So grab your favorite notebook and let's get started. Chapter 1, Introduction to Complex Numbers Let's start with something familiar, the complex number system. You've probably seen this before. The imaginary unit i is defined such that i squared equals negative 1. This allows us to solve equations like x squared plus 1 equals 0, which have no solutions in the real numbers. But here's the thing. What does it mean when we say i equals the square root of negative 1? And why do we define i squared as negative 1? These questions might seem simple, but they lead to some profound insights and a few challenges. What if I told you that i squared equals negative 1 isn't as straightforward as it seems? Let's dig deeper. Chapter 2 proving i squared does not equal negative 1. Here's where things get interesting. If we say i equals the square root of negative 1, then squaring both sides gives us the square root of negative 1 squared equals negative 1. But wait, can we really cancel the square root with the square? In mathematics, the power rule doesn't apply to negative bases in the usual way. For example, negative 1 raised to the 1 half power multiplied by negative 1 raised to the 1 half power does not equal negative 1 raised to the first power. So, does this mean i squared does not equal negative 1? Not quite. This is where definitions come into play. Chapter 3, i squared equals negative 1. As a definition, here's the key insight. i squared equals negative 1 isn't something we prove. It's a definition. It's not a result of applying rules. It's a starting point. We introduce i specifically to solve equations like x squared plus 1 equals 0. So while i squared equals negative 1 is valid, it avoids addressing deeper ambiguities in the system. For instance, what happens when we take the square root of both sides? Does the square root of i squared equal i? Not necessarily. It could also be negative i. This brings us to an exciting question. Can we create a system where these ambiguities disappear? Chapter 4, Introducing the Virtual Number System. This is where the virtual number system comes in. Instead of defining i as the square root of negative 1, we define j as the natural logarithm of negative 1, where e raised to the power of j equals negative 1. What's so special about this? Well, it shifts the focus from square roots to logarithms and exponentials, which are inherently more consistent. In this system, a virtual number is written as a plus b times j, where a and b are real numbers. The beauty of this system is that it avoids contradictions. There's no ambiguity in e raised to the power of j equals negative 1, and we can derive everything else from there. Chapter 5, Solving the Square Root of Negative 1 Squared, Without Ambiguity. Now let's revisit the square root of negative 1 squared. In the virtual system, we don't need to cancel the square root with the square. Instead, we use j equals the natural logarithm of negative 1. First, recall that the square root of negative 1 can be expressed as e raised to the power of j over 2, because squaring e raised to the power of j over 2 gives e raised to the power of j, which equals negative 1. So by substituting the square root of negative 1 with e raised to the power of j over 2, we compute. The square of the square root of negative 1 equals e raised to the power of j over 2, squared. Simplify the exponent e raised to the power of j over 2 squared equals e raised to the power of j. From the definition of j, we know e raised to the power of j equals negative 1. Therefore, the square of the square root of negative 1 equals negative 1. No contradictions, no ambiguities, just pure logic. Chapter 6, Comparing Modulus, Argument, and Logarithm. Now let's compare the two systems. Take the modulus, for example. In the complex system, the modulus of z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. In the virtual system, the modulus of v equals the square root of a squared plus b times pi squared. Notice the logarithmic scaling introduced by j. Similarly, the argument and logarithm are adjusted to ensure consistency. The virtual system resolves ambiguities, especially in multi-valued functions like logarithms. It's a cleaner, more robust framework. Chapter 7. Which system is better? So, which system is better? Well, it depends. 
The complex system is simpler and widely used. It's perfect for most applications, from engineering to quantum mechanics. But the virtual system offers something unique. It adheres strictly to mathematical rules, avoiding contradictions. It's ideal for contexts where precision matters, like advanced theoretical work. Mathematics is all about exploring new ideas, questioning assumptions, and finding better ways to solve problems. Uh, whether you prefer the simplicity of the complex system or the elegance of the virtual system, the journey is what makes it beautiful. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into math and science. And don't forget to leave a comment. What do you think about the virtual number system? Until next time, keep exploring.